Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another tune-up, where I take one of your viewer-submitted decks and give it a tweak to help it better do what you want it to do. But before we get started, I wanted to remind everybody that we're now officially affiliated with our Canadian retailer of choice, Harry Tarantula. If you want to help support the channel by picking up singles or sealed product, head on over and use the promo code CMDR Space Mechanic at checkout. Now let's see what's in the workshop today. Viewer Meh writes, Hey, it's a human's tribal list. Not much more to say. I want it to feel like it does more. Well, short and simple. Thanks for submitting your list, Meh. Let's try and get you feeling a little more enthusiastic about your deck. Your commander is Jarena Kudro, a newer Mardu red, white, black commander from the C20 Precon products and is all about humanity. Making human tokens for each time you cast her, pumping the power of humans, a clear cut tribal strategy. One of the best things about her is that the token creating ability is on enters the battlefield, which we could potentially exploit with flicker effects available to white. But really, Jarena wants you to go wide with humans. She gives plus two power to humans, which can make anything scary. So value on your bodies will be the name of the game. Use anthems and shared keywords to build a threat like some kind of nightmare build-a-bear workshop. I can see you're really including a lot of tribal staples in the list right from the get-go. Door of Destinies, Herald's Horn, and Vanquisher's Banner are all good starts to help make even a 1-1 human a beefy beater, with or without your commander. You've got enchantments to this effect as well, including a personal favorite of mine in Cathar's Crusade, but also shared animosity and true conviction. True conviction may be a little tougher to cast in a three-color deck, but it really is a game ender. I'm not as wild about anthems like Etchings of the Chosen, Dictate of Heliod, or Glorious Anthem. Be careful about the volume of these effects, lest you end up with all of the anthems and no bodies to benefit. Your creature base is really solid. Everything but Sun Titan is a human. Value creatures like Swiftblade Vindicator are what I'm talking about when we want human tribe. Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, all before we get to put some icing on that cake fantastic. Audric Lunark Marshall is another absolute staple when we're looking at this strategy. Being able to give all of your creatures keywords on top of Anthem effects, that's how you're going to run away with games. Since you aren't making a lot of tokens or aren't exploiting flicker effects yet, Soul Warden feels like an inefficient choice. And Alesha, who smiles at death, isn't really being used to the best effect in the deck construction either. Campbell, Console of Allocation, seems an odd choice as well. A notable non-aggro option amongst others that really want to be turning sideways. I really like Call of the Copper Coats and increasing devotion as a way to go wide here. Token production is going to be key. Because we're increasing the value of every body we make, we want to be able to make more bodies. You reach a point where it's more valuable to add another creature than to add more value. What I mean here is, if you have effects that are giving your creatures vigilance and plus three plus three, and you have three creatures out, it's more effective to create three new bodies, even if they start as one ones, than to give your existing creatures another plus one, plus one. In that way, you end up with six 4-4 four, four Vigilance creatures, as opposed to three 5-5 five, five Vigilance creatures. So really, we need to balance our Anthem effects with the volume of bodies careful. I want to remove 
boring anthems like Glorious Anthem or Dictate of Heliod and make sure we're really getting some more value on a broader scale than just power and toughness bonuses. I feel like some of the enters the battlefield effect centric enchantments like Impact Tremors and Molten Echoes aren't as efficient as we need them to be. Even if we choose to go a little wider, they're not going to be worth taking a turn off. Also, your mana base. I can tell much of it is still from the pre-con. We should cut some of the tapped lands like Scoured Barons or the bounce lands like Boros Garrison or Orzov Basilica in favor of more basics or Blood Crypt, your missing shock land. Also, cut Reliquary Tower. Your only meaningful card draw source is Species Specialist, and that really isn't reliable card draw. Nothing that's going to keep your hand at more than seven cards. There's a few things I want to add to this list. The first is token generation. Making tokens is easy, but making human tokens is a little trickier. Elspeth, son's nemesis, can reliably make human tokens as a planeswalker. Even if all she does is make a pair of human tokens before being removed, the fact she has escape means that she can be a great way to recover your board even later in the game. Hanweir Militia Captain, once flipped, makes more and more human tokens each turn as well. Even though you can't really reliably flip it when you need to. And Hero of Precinct 1, in your deck in particular, can reliably generate a handful of human tokens thanks to the concentration of multicolor spells you're running. At 2 mana, even if this creature incidentally makes two more creature tokens for you, that's a big value bonus. Omen of the Sun can help create creatures too, making human tokens at instant speed with the additional utility of letting you scry too when you need to dig for additional answers. Even enchantments like Outlaw's Merriment, which makes variant human tokens every upkeep, is a great way to make sure you've always got bodies to pump up. Another aspect I want to add in is some slight flicker effect emphasis. Versatile effects with mostly modal benefits. Charming Prince is perfect here. Not only as a human with an efficient body, but you get the choice of enters the battlefield triggers that best suit your needs. And can flicker Jarena to make a few more bodies. Ephemerate can be a great way to dodge removal or to just get some extra value. And with Rebound, you get to do it again for a single mana on a single card. Even if this makes you one or two extra tokens or fetches you a land with a Knight of the White Orchid, that value is fantastic. And lastly, I want value anthems. Not just raw power boost, but ones that give keywords too. Radiant Destiny is a perfect example of this. And one of my favorites for this kind of strategy is Concerted Effort. Basically an Audric on a stick, sharing keywords across all of your creatures. And there's a new one-time super anthem with White's Game Ender, Acroma's Will. It definitely belongs in this deck. It can be a gotcha, giving your creatures indestructible, or it can give them just every keyword ever. A great way to push through damage and snag a win, even with a limited board state. For upgrades, I typically recommend tutors, but in this case, the tutors aren't the same black, versatile tutors you're used to hearing about. No, instead, I want to recommend Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard. Both humans that help tutor up other humans to your hand. Bodies that benefit from your tribal shenanigans and go get ways to make them even better. And Grand Abolisher is a human that helps prevent others from messing with you on your turn. No instant speed removal, no combat tricks, no activated abilities, all on a body that benefits from your tribal pump effects. 
and Sarah Ascendant is also a fantastic one-drop human. And in our format is a 6-6 flying lifelinker for one mana. I'd recommend it, but it is currently over $20. So invest only if you feel it'll be a true benefit. A big thanks to our viewers for submitting these deck lists. And I certainly hope that this deck's owner is going to let us know in the comments below how they've chosen to tweak and tune this deck. And if you want to submit a deck for a tune-up, please reach out via email, via Twitter, or in the comments of this or any video. I make sure to read them all personally. Let's take a look at how we've chosen to tweak this list today. All right, so I've cleaned up your mana base a bit. Made sure you aren't competing with too many tap lands to cast on curve. We've kept in the temples because your card draw capabilities are limited. So every scry helps a lot. But out are the bounce lands, reliquary tower, and the game lands. I've slotted in the pain lands and basics instead. I've removed a couple of the vanilla anthems in favor of more shared keywords. Vigilance, First Strike, and more. That helps up the multiplicative value of straight power boosts. And we've tweaked your creatures a bit. Some that help go wider, some that help go taller, and generally more bodies that you want to be seeing off the top, and fewer you draw and think, this really doesn't do anything right now. Overall, I think you've got a nice aggro deck here with tribal themes, looking to win by turning sideways. I hope you like some of the tweaks we made to the deck, meh. Please ensure to let us know in the comments how you've managed to change your list. And for everyone else, let us know how you would continue to improve this deck. But as always, folks, until next time, good luck and have fun. A huge thanks to all of our patrons for making this content possible. We couldn't do this here on the channel without your help. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems this month, Ben Davis, Ben Frayne, Sterling Langford, and Will Briggs. And a special shout out to our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, and our newest premium patron, JD. If you want to become a patron and get a personalized tune-up, head on over to patreon.com slash cmdrmechanic.